Pain Jerk and the Tenses arrived in Newcastle and were picked up by John Goodwin from the airport. It was a beautiful, cool, crisp day. As a matter of fact, every day for the Tusk Festival was a beautiful, cool, crisp, and sunny day in Newcastle. We were dropped off at the Star and Shadow Cinema, which contained many fine volunteers and would be our home over the weekend. It all kicked off on Friday with an introduction by yours truly. And I hope you all have a great time. Don't sit down. Friday evening started out with Trancers 2 in a mellow groove. Switching to Muscle Tusk, mad guitars and high quality tape manipulations. The exquisite beauty of part wild horse's mane on both sides was stunning. Dean Skagen and Eric McKenzie. Stunning performance, starting out very slow, a man alone, joined by a nut or something. Was it a monkey mask? Was that a flashlight? Was he cleaning up? He was all in white and glowing. Desert heat played breathlessly. Pelt was an Appalachian melange. Hieroglyphic Being put down some nasty blue algae jams and finished us off for the Friday night. Touching, 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 unknown social connections. You got that? Touching. Unknown social connections. Tusk, right? I'm working on this piece. Uh, it's called the 72 hour face reader in gravy boots. Let's see for yourself. Fritz's installation was spread out all over the lounge of Tusk Festival. 
Every day he changed it. So the 72 hours in the title refers to the time that it took for him and his elves to put up the installation. It was really a treat to come into the space each day and see what had changed. Often things would creep up on you. My favorite thing was a wall of bells that I only discovered the last day. Gary Smith brought in some midday lunch accoutrement. I wanted to give a shout out to all the helpful people that worked in the merch stall and expertly demoed Tom Bug's electronic noise machine. <laughs> While some lucky Tusk Festival attendees got to find out how to make them. So. I've only been doing electronics for sort of like eight or ten, eight or ten years. I got, I sort of, I did study um, quite a technical course um, called music systems engineering, which in theory should have taught me about electronics. While these guys were busy with their soldering irons, Derek Walmsley of the Wire and Jamal Mosh, aka a hieroglyphic being, were in mid Q and A. Until the club burn out all the white people, they're never like, oh, we're bringing the Asians. They're going to do Asian night. I'm serious. I'm not making this up. They literally would do that. And then when the club is burnt out, then all of a sudden, they'll go to some black promoters, and all of a sudden, they'll have a thug night. I'm like, not b bullshit. They'll literally do that. The club has to be on this last leg, can't make any more money until they burn the culture out. Then they'll be like, okay, we'll let the black folks in. The film program by Haskilani and Joe Murray were exquisite. A highlight of Saturday's program was a screening of Harry Smith's films, accompanied by a distorted harp soundtrack by Rodri Davis. I've heard through the grapevine that since Tusk Festival, Rodri Davis has teamed up with the mighty Richard Dawson for a collaboration album, which leads us nicely to Saturday night's opening act. Hill from Galway, Longford, and Virginia. Very beautiful and ethereal.
Sylvester and Fang too. Very cacophonous. Exciting. Getting everyone ready for pain jerk. That strobe had many people fearing an epileptic fit. It was beautiful. <laughs> Television with the tenses. The projector was broken. We don't mind. We love television. NHK Koizen from Osaka was great. I loved how he made everything 3D through his glasses. <laughs> Gate provided a thunderous climax to an eventful Saturday. Sunday started way too early for Sunday. Fortunately, our hangovers were soothed by a full gamelan set by part wild horse's mane on both sides and pelt, featuring Mike Gangloff's son, Tycho. Treated to another Q and A between Graham Lampkin and Derek Walmsley. So, has anyone got any questions they want to throw at Graham at all? Do you have a surfboard? Do I have a surfboard? <laughs> Not anymore. Can you surf in folks? <laughs> no, I've never tried it. I'm not. Uh... Not particularly into that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Mr. Dawson tell you what happened while the films were being screened. This afternoon, if you get the chance, if you don't watch the films, go on to the Cumberland Islands, which is just where we at. I don't know sense of direction. Over the bridge. Cross the bridge and uh, get yourself to the Cumberland. To sing with these people is the most incredible thing. When your voice merges, you can feel the reverberations of all the other voices in your chest. And it's, uh, it's really beautiful, so, so if you don't watch the films, go there.
Everyone was treated to a lovely song from the Sacred Harp singing session. Before I introduce Sunday night's excitement with the gargantuan lobster priest. extraordinaire and all-around funny guy, Kian Nugent. Sophie Tafjord, always a treat. Cool, blue, gold, silver, shining, sparkling. Michael Morley, Steve Noble, Gary Smith. Michael Morley, Steve Noble, Gary Smith. Michael Morley, Steve Noble. Look out for Graham Lampkin and Jason Muscovite. The final crashing blow to Tusk came with the Fushitsusha. It was the end of the night and the end of the festival. It could have been the end of much more. <laughs> <laughs> 